Let's take a quick look at the Complete Control physical hardware itself. Starting on the left side of the keyboard, you've got a fixed velocity mode button that can enable one solid velocity for all the different notes you hit. The ability to shift up by octaves and by semitones if you're using the shift function key. We've got a standard pitch wheel on the left and a modulation wheel right next to it, as well as a touch strip underneath that can be activated with your finger. The keyboard has a light guide across the top, and those lights will change colors and code different regions of the keyboard when Complete Control needs to show you something. In the upper left, we've got the shift function, as well as a couple of other buttons having to do with the way you play Complete Control, like enabling the scale. Now, some of the more astute of you may have noticed that I played a major scale, but you heard a minor one, and that's because I've got the scale mode enabled, and that's turning my scale into a minor scale, no matter what I do. We'll take a look at how to work with that later, but basically you would use the shift function to get to that secondary function and edit it. The arpeggiator's right next to it. You can see that light guide coming into play, which is pretty neat. Then we've got all underneath here a lot of DAW transport and editing controls. Everything from your standard play and stop to more advanced things like quantize and undo and stuff like that. You can mute and solo tracks in your DAW by using those mute and solo buttons there. And you can navigate the presets up and down if you're in the browser right here. So I can actually just go to the next preset instead of previewing it. So that's pretty handy. When you are in a browser or in something with multiple pages, you can use the page buttons at the bottom to turn pages. So you can see as I'm browsing my library, I can turn the pages. I've got some more buttons that are really handy in Machine or various DAWs for, you know, selecting tracks, patterns, and clearing scenes and things like that. Then I've got these soft knobs and soft buttons on the top that can morph to different things. If I'm in DAW control mode and I'm mixing, I can use these buttons to select certain mixer channels. But the buttons also do whatever the software says underneath it. So right now I've got pre here turned on. I can turn that on or off using that button. If I'm in plug-in mode, you'll see that these knobs down on the bottom actually do something. They adjust the um, you know, the type, the feedback, and the cutoff, and the resonance, things like that. And that's going to change on a per-instrument basis. You can switch between modes here in the upper right corner. So if I want to browse for sounds, or perhaps open plug-in mode, you would do that. And I've got a couple of other things. Um, if I'm using DAW control, I can open up the mixer. I can open up and surf between the various instances of the complete control software. And I can also enable MIDI mode, where it's showing all the different controllers and what MIDI controller they're sending. So if you want to use complete control to um, control a specific MIDI channel or MIDI event that is not necessarily routed through the complete control software, it's possible here. And then finally, the setup where I can adjust the brightness of the display and uh, see the serial number of my device. And hopefully as software gets updated and changed, we'll see more things popping in to set up more configurability for the user. So that's a tour of the physical hardware. We're probably going to want to take a look at the software interface after that.